Hello and welcome to Matters of Faith. I'm Christiana Bakker. Our topic today, Abraham, friend of God and father of believers. Prophet Abraham plays an important role in all three religions of the book, Judaism, Christianity and Islam. Today we're going to investigate his role in all three faiths, particularly in Islam. We'll find out more about Prophet Abraham, his life, his faith in God and his unique character traits. And we'll discover the impact of his legacy on the world today. Our guest is Dr. Stefan Wimmer, author of many articles and books on Judaism, Christianity and Islam. Welcome, Dr. Wimmer. You wear many hats, as they say. <laughs> Could you please introduce yourself? Well, I'm involved in a society for interreligious dialogue based in Munich, where I come from. Mm -hmm. um, and this, so this society is called Friends of Abraham. Uh, and my background has a lot to do with many years I spent in Jerusalem, where I lived for seven years. And uh, today I'm at the University of Munich doing research and teaching and uh, writing publications on, the, on matters of dialogue, on matters of faith. Actually. Now, in your book, um, From Adam to Muhammad, uh, you touch on many different religious themes and subjects uh, in all the different faiths. Now, how do you describe the prophets in this book? Well, the title of the book is indeed From Adam to Muhammad, and then the title goes on and says Bible and Quran in comparison, which is the actual topic of the book. The book is on, um, on comparing the, the, the common traditions that the Bible tells us and the Quran tells us. As a matter of fact, um, many Muslims, of course, are aware about these common traditions because they have them in the Quran, but many Christians are not aware at all um, that the Quran has so much in common with the Bible. Many Christians, when you talk to them, are surprised that Jesus is mentioned at all in the Quran, that Muslims have a, um, a, very, a very intimate um, um, belief um, to Jesus. For many Christians, this seems to be a contradiction because they think Christianity is one thing, Judaism is something else, and Islam is something else. Um, and so the book is mainly written for Christian readers to make them reali realize how much the Quran has in common with the Bible. But it is also written for, for, for Muslim readers um, to discover more of the opposite. Um, the title was chosen from Adam to Muhammad because this is the line of, of biblical and Quranic history from the creation, from the beginning of mankind. Um, now, when I, talk, when I talk about this title, many Christians ask me, well, um, you can say that the prophets from Adam to Muhammad are mentioned in the Quran, but Muhammad is not mentioned in the Bible, they say. From the Islamic perspective, as you know, there are certain passages in the Bible, in Bible which can be interpreted like referring to Muhammad. Now, in your book, you know, how do you describe the prophets? Belief in prophethood is, you know, one of the unique tenets of Islamic faith. Mm -hmm. um, what are, you know, the special characteristics of prophets? Mm -hmm. Well, in the book, we compare the, the different text passages from the Bible. What does the Bible say about Abraham? What does the Quran say about Abraham? What is in common and what are the differences and why are there differences? Um, the concept of prophethood in itself is different in religions. In Islam, a prophet is, is of course a human being. We have no difference. There's God and there's human beings and nothing in between, um, except angels maybe or jinn. But um, I mean, human beings are human beings and are not son of God and are not God themselves in Muslim perspective. Um, but prophets in the Quran are exemplary human beings who have a special relationship with God, who have a special contact with God, and who are um, not to be criticized by other human beings for the way they live. Um, but, uh, you know, there are five uh, major prophets, I suppose, according to a Quranic understanding, um, Noah, well, Abraham, Noah, um, Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad. Uh, what is so unique about those prophets in mm -hmm. particular? 
Well, we, um, we learn a lot about those, pro about those prophets in the Holy Scriptures, in both Holy Scriptures, except Muhammad, of course, about whom we learn much more in the Quran. Um, but the Quran says, if I'm not mistaken, that, that there is no difference between prophets, that yes. all prophets are, on the same, are the same um, before God. But we know more about these prophets. And an important, an important difference might be that the prophets Adam and Noah are the ancestors of all mankind in mm -hmm. the thinking of the Holy Scriptures. They are all our ancestors. Abraham is ancestor to um, certain peoples, to the descendants of Ismail, the Arabs, and to the descendants of Isaac, the Jews. Um, Moses is considered uh, the, the main prophet of Judaism mm -hmm. from all points of views. Jesus has a very special role in Christianity, has an important role in Islam too, but a very, very special role central in role Christianity, yeah. central role. And Muhammad, of course, has, has a central role in Islam. So the last three prophets are, are central for the three religions. Mm -hmm. Um, the first two are for all mankind, and Abraham is in between. He is a bridge between, between followers of different religions. Can you elaborate on that a little bit, his particular uniqueness? Well, in the Bible, as well as in Quran, he has the two sons, the firstborn son Ismail, Ishmael, in the Bible, um, from, from Hagar, mm -hmm. um, from one of his wives. And the second-born son, Isaac, Ishaq, Yitzhak, from his main wife, Sarah. Now, um, for Jews it is self-evident that the Jews are the descendants of, of Isaac, so in this, in this regard of Abraham, and Sarah. Abraham and Sarah are considered the ancestors of the Jewish people. And in Jewish perspective, they are considered actually Jews, Abraham and Sarah, the first Jews. In Quranic perspective, Abraham and Ismail are the first Muslims, Abraham, first of all, and the, the descendants of Ismail are considered the Arabs, the different mm -hmm. Arab tribes, and the highlight in this line of, of um, descendants then is the Prophet Muhammad. Mm -hmm. So both the Prophet Muhammad and those many, many other different prophets who came between Abraham and Muhammad David, Solomon, John the Baptist, Jesus, are descendants of Abraham via Isaac. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a bridge that bridges prophets and that bridges Islam and Judaism. And yeah. in a consequence, indirectly, also, also Christianity. Now Christians are not considered, do not consider themselves physical descendants of Abraham. It's a question of faith. In the New Testament, St. Paul, writes in the epistle to the Hebrews um, that, that the important question is Abraham's faith. If you follow him in your faith, you are a descendant of Abraham, even if it's not a physical um, line. And the Quran says some, something very similar. When the Quran says, I think it's in, in Surah Safat, um, that Abraham was not a Jew and not a Christian, but uh, Hanif Muslim. Um, now, uh, Prophet Abraham is also called Halilullah, which means a friend of God. Mm -hmm. Could you explain the term? Uh, because I think he was the only one who was called this title. Mm -hmm. Expressively with this title, yes. And this is, again, something that the Holy Scriptures have in common, because also in the Bible, in the Old Testament, God himself speaks about Abraham as Ohavi, my beloved, the one that I love, especially. In the New Testament, in Greek, again, he is called uh, Philos Theou, the friend of God, which is exact translation of the Arabic Khalilullah. So this is something the three religions share. share. Um, actually, the word Hebron, the name of the city where, where Abraham is buried. In Arabic, the city is called Khalil, the friend, the city of oh. the friend of God. Madina to Khalil, the city of the friend. Mm -hmm. In Hebrew, Hebron comes from Haver, which means friend, the city of, of the friend. Mm -hmm. So even the languages 
um, share this concept that Abraham had a very special relationship with God. Um, and this is incidentally why we called our society, about which we can talk later again, the Friends of Abraham Society. Where does this special relationship come from? Does it come from his enormous tests that he had to pass and really pass, was ready to pass with flying mm -hmm. colors? Perhaps you could explain this. Mm -hmm. Abraham mm, passed many special tests. And this must be a sign of a very good friendship. If your friend um, tests you in many ways, then friendship must be strong. Um, usually when, when, you, when you experience something from a good friend that you wouldn't expect and you cannot explain and it irritates you, um, many people would give up friendship and say, no, not, not this way. That's too much for me. Yeah. Um, so this must have been indeed a very, very special relationship. And um, there is the story in the Quran, which is not in the Bible, but in rabbinic tradition, in Jewish tradition, that um, Abraham was put in the fire because he, because he, he insisted um, that the idols of his people, of his family, are wrong, are wrong deities, are wrong gods, and there's only the one, so he was put in fire, and he survived the fire, um, which reminds one of when a, when a potter makes, makes a pot, makes a vessel, creates something from, from Adama, from earth. He puts it in fire to make it, to make it suitable, to make it usable, to make it strong and hard. And only after this, after this procedure, the vessel is good, can be used, um, which is maybe a comparison. There is in Istanbul, in the Topkapi Museum, yes. um, a special hall where sacred relics are preserved, objects that are considered to, um, to symbolize the, the important figures in history, the prophets. There is there are objects from the personal belongings of the Prophet Muhammad, his seal ring and his coat, his mantle and his sword. And there are, there are objects for, for many different prophets. What about Abraham? And Abraham has a cooking pot. There is a vessel shown there uh, and it is described as the cooking pot, the cooking vessel of Abraham, which is interesting. Now, first of all, the vessel is made of stone. It is not a pottery vessel, it is made of stone, because stone is very hard. When the potter tests the vessels he produced, um, he, knocks, he knocks them to see if they, um, if they hold, if they stay or if they break. Um, stone doesn't break. Stone is a very hard, I mean, it will break when you throw it down, but when you knock at it, it doesn't break. It is a very hard vessel. He, he, its creator can test it, can test it very hard. Um, the fact that it is described as a cooking pot is important for Abraham. We shall be back okay. with the explanation <laughs> of why this is important right after the break. Don't go far away. We shall continue with more on Abraham, his cooking pot, and his severe tests. <laughs> 